very good morning to you. How are you doing? And welcome to yet another exciting episode of Life and Style. It's Monday. That means we are all about inspiration. We are about empowering and making you the very best version of yourself that you could ever be. So on Motivate today, I'm going to be talking to Faraha. Now, Faraha is a mother of three and she is an amazing, well, she says not a fashion designer. She's in the business of fashion. But before all of that, she was she is a certified accountant worked in the industry for a while but then decided you know what art and fashion is my calling so she quit all of that to do fashion hmm? exciting much right let's go talk to her and find out what really really makes her tick Yeah, yeah many. <laughs> <laughs> that is so <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> you look lovely. Uh, thank you look you. lovely, lovely. Asante. Asante Sana. Mm. And there's an entourage. Yes. <laughs> High uh, five. How are uh, you? Hi. These are my three musketeers. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? My name is Ryan. And yours? My name is Ryan. Uh huh. I'm Sean. Okay. Uh, my brand ambassadors, as you can oh, see, fully beautiful. clothed in Cocolini. You know what? Oh, they are. This is Cocolini? Yes, it and is. And you're also wearing Cocolini? Yes. <laughs> They're very, yeah. very vibrant. Thank you so much. A beautiful space in here. Asante you know, when I talked about Asante. art and fashion, I did not know I was going to be hit <laughs> from the doorstep with all these amazing things. Asante. Cocolini. Caribisha. All right. <laughs> So we're here to talk about Motivate and you and definitely thank you for introducing your family to me. Uh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> I can't stop. And, uh, <laughs> Do we go up? Yeah, sure. We're right. going to go up. Okay. As you can see, lots of yes. art on the walls. Yes, <laughs> a lot of that. Uh, um, from do you collect from here or this is actually the same artist all the way mm, yeah yes those those first three are he's an ivorian artist okay his name is mene all right yeah and then this is a ugandan artist so from wherever yeah. you go you go from collect wherever it. you go yeah <laughs> i try to carry um you know a painting i love that uh, yeah it's like your little family. wall of fame <laughs> yes it's beautiful. Okay, I can see the three ambassadors right there. <laughs> <laughs> and you, of course. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. And who's this? Ah, that's my nanny. Uh -huh. Her name is Awa. She's been with us for about 18 years. So, yes. We don't get those here. Uh, <laughs> she's, our very... home, she's our home manager. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Uh, she's beautiful. Pro, actually, she's part of the family. Great. Yeah. Is it supposed to be that way, Emma Ilianguka? Yes, it is. It's supposed to be that way. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I always say there's no right way for anything. I, it's true. Yeah? Yeah. We've just put it that way. I'm sure it can stand up straight, but I just thought, ah, we have all, all these, these other ones. ones. <laughs> we can change a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And that was done by um, a this ceramist one? Yeah, in Uganda. Okay. Yeah. So she's from Uganda. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. It really is. And it's everywhere. I know, years. lots and lots of collectibles. <laughs> yeah, everywhere we travel. You know, quirky little things like this. Like little car over there. Can yeah. I touch it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. The things you can do with everything with you collect everything. anywhere. <laughs> So we're going to yeah. be having our interview. Yes, so we're going to go all the way okay. um, upstairs. All right. Um, we have a little sitting area on the roof. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. Be careful, my yeah. Oh, thank you. I will be. <laughs> huh? I will be. I will no, be. no accidents. And you read a lot. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, I think Fiction, I got the all love. of it put together. It's a mixture. A mixture ah, of things. See, you see shades, all of them, right? Yeah, there. Nah. You're scared the kids are going to grab them and read. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, beautiful. Thank you. Okay. 
further up. We keep going. Okay. Wow. How many stories in this house? Wow. <laughs> this, uh, how many was it? One, two, three. Are you oh. seriously counting? Honestly. <laughs> it's like, I've done my exercise for the day. Wow. Yes, and these are just wooden fish. Yeah. And they put, uh, you know, they, they jewel them, add a little bit of whatever. This is by Penny Winter. Okay. Yeah, so That's local. Out of Karen, yeah. yeah. This is by the Green Room in Tanzania. They're based in wow. Tanzania. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm. It's like an art gallery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a museum. Something so beautiful. <laughs> Wow, and the view is breathtaking. Yeah, that's Karura Forest. And yeah, Karura, right? Right outside, the fresh air. You get it straight from. Every day I look at this, I, my respects to. Wangari Madai. Wangari Madai. She fought a good fight. So yeah, she did. And, and it's well protected now? Idea. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, that's really nice. Yeah. And the art continues. And the art continues. <laughs> oh, but unfortunately, we moved. It was going to rain, so we moved everything. Oh, okay, okay, um, okay. How long has it taken for you to, you know, put all these collections together? Um, actually, I started when I was still in college. So I started many years, over 20 years ago. What? Just, you know, picking up things everywhere I go, when I uh -huh. travel, anything that looks very quirky. Um, yeah, so it's been a long time coming, mm -hmm. and now I'm just trying to consolidate, put everything together. And, Sometimes uh, you look at them and think, is it a bit too much? Or will people look at me weirdly when they come and see all of this? I love it. That, that is true. Um, but as I said, it's been acquired over 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Wow. So, it's, so art comes naturally to you? I love art. I love culture. Yeah. I love music. I love books. So, um, anything that is a form of escapism, yeah. I, I find very interesting. And I get lost in my art. Um, I find that it calms me down. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and all this, over the, over, the, over the last 20 years of you collecting all of this, I mean, you were in a different profession before you got into this uh, fully because you were really into it even before. But had you thought about creating your own brand? Have you said creating your own brand along the way? Or were you just supporting and collecting art from other artists? Um, I think it was both. Okay. I didn't voluntarily set out to start a brand. Mm -hmm. But I think along the way, I thought, okay, well, why not? But actually, I think I started, some of the pieces I have here date back to 1987, 1988, wow. which was when I had just started uh, college, my, uh, my freshman year. Mm -hmm. um, that was in the US. So I started slowly, slowly, slowly. And I remember I always used to say, um, one day I'd love for my house to be on a, a coffee table book. So maybe, <laughs> you know. You know, did you yeah. ever get that? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm on my way there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting that you mentioned that. Let us go back to the person that you were before in college. What did you study? What did you want to be? You know, now we have Coco and <laughs> we have amazing things going on with that. But who was Furaha then? Actually, what I wanted to study, I wanted to do linguistics. Okay. Yeah. And my dad said, absolutely no way. What are you going to do with linguistics? Uh -huh. Now in hindsight, of course, I could have done many things. I could have done translation, I could have done interpretation. And, uh, but back in the day, he advised, why don't you study something like um, accounting? Mm. I didn't want to do law. My father was a lawyer, my mother is a lawyer. I didn't want to do law. Um, and then I thought, okay, accounting, maybe. I wasn't very good at numbers. Yeah. Um, I never excelled in math. So uh, what my dad did was he got a very dear friend of his to talk to me about accounting. And I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Um, and the whole idea was my dad said, you should study something that you can eventually become independent. You don't always have to be um, employed. employed. Um, and, but as I said, my setback was that I wasn't very good at math. Yeah. 
I don't know if I wasn't very good at math or I had not been taught to love math. math. I remember I had a teacher who used to cane me literally every day, so already I hated it. Yeah. Um, but when I went to college, I met a wonderful professor called Professor Bell. And um, she taught me to love math. And then all of a sudden, I was really good. And she actually wanted me to do a degree in math. But because I'd already just been traumatized by the subject, I didn't even want to contemplate it. So, you know, accounting fell quite right at that moment. And you, get, you, got, you got right into the profession of accountancy. Yes, right uh -huh. after I finished um, undergrad, I was immediately recruited by Ernst & Young. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked with them for two years before I decided to go to grad school. And in grad school, I decided I didn't want to do an MBA. Yeah. So I did a master's in international development with a wow. focus on health and development. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So two years in, then you went back to school. Had you started to think about, you know, moving out of that because you got to a point where I'm done with this. I just want to focus on my art. Actually, what's really funny is I don't know if I like, yeah, I, I worked, I mean, Ernst & Young was a brilliant opportunity, it's yeah, a, there was only, um, I remember in the state of Pennsylvania at the time, uh, Pennsylvania and New Jersey, there was only 40 of us who were recru recruited to the Philadelphia office, wow. um, but one day, I, I just walked out, I, yeah, I, I really did, in April 1993, and I went to work at The Gap as a sales lady, what? I know. Huge, yeah. No, 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 yeah. no. We had our parents talk to us about this, get us a professor, get us something, whatever it, it took for us to, you know, get into accountancy. And yeah. you walk out and go to a Gap store. Yeah, I did. What did ha Dad have to say about that? I think they were very confused mm -hmm. and the only thing was I could promise them was that I will go to grad school. Yeah. I think at the back of my mind I was still uh, wise in the sense that I wasn't going to be a salesperson all along. Yeah. Basically I was forging a future that I didn't know um, at the time. Yeah. Um, so I think the fact that he, I just told him, you know what, Dad, I'm just going to do this for a few months. So I did um, the gap, then I went to work for Banana Republic, and then I got into grad school. Then everybody was happy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Coco Lily. When did it begin officially? So you waking up and deciding, you know what, I'm done with all this accountancy. I'm not looking for any other job. I, I know it's good money, but then I have to take a risk. Yeah, it was a gradual transition. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do it um, right away. Uh, I go posted to Uganda to manage the bank's portfolio in Uganda. And while there, I decided, you know, why don't I start a project working with um, women mm. uh, weaving bags? And uh, actually, those bags you see are the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Was my first, really that was my very first business. Those are banana and, leaves? Uh, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, they, so they would weave that, and then I would, um, c you know, cover it with Ankara, sort of add a little bit of flair uh, to it. And the bags did really, really well. Mm -hmm. And then I thought to myself, oh, well, if I can do really well with bags, <laughs> why don't I start <laughs> clothing? Okay. Um, but n not as a fashion brand, more as a retail, to make it really into, um, um, into, into a business. Yeah. yeah. So you started that. Did you, did you move, when you started the bags and they did really well, you didn't quit work immediately? No, I didn't. No, you didn't. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of research um, and I realized that to start a proper retail brand, mm -hmm. you needed considerable amount of capital. Yeah. And nobody's going to give it to you. No. We have a problem in Africa where, you know, funding SMEs is, is, is we just don't get the funding. So I had to figure it out and how to raise the money to be able to start, um, to start the, you know, to start the business, I gave up a lot. I have a few friends that I borrowed money from that were very supportive, um, and so I spent about three and a half years, wow. yeah, saving and just starting the brand. 
it's interesting that you say no one is going to give you the money and that when you depend on other people it may, they may not come through for you so it needs to be very intimate and very intentional for you to show them i have been saving this amount of money mm -hmm. so it's not like i'm coming to you empty-handed because most people will just wait i need a loan to just start if i don't get that loan i'll never start instead of starting from where you are which yeah. is most important so how many years now since you left the accountancy world and strictly into you know fashion and creation no i left my job with the african Development bank i left my job last year in june okay so it's been a year and two months already wow. <laughs> getting into the market starting a new business in kenya there are many other designers who are doing kenyan authentic stuff but how has that been for you you know cutting a niche for yourself and you know having people accept and embrace what you're bringing to the table? Yeah, I think that's a brilliant question. And it's always at the back of my mind. I don't like to call myself a fashion designer. Yeah. Uh, I think we have brilliant fashion designers in Kenya who went to school and, you know, have trained for it. So yeah. sometimes I feel as though this is appropriation when I call myself um, so what do you designer. call yourself? Rahat? I think I could say I'm a lover of fashion, but okay. I really consider myself more as a creator, uh, as an entrepreneur, per, oh. an entrepreneur in, in in fashion. Someone who has seen that there is uh, a market in um, in fashion. So I I don't dab myself a at all designer. as a fashion designer. Mm. Uh, I would say that I'm in the business of fashion, and what we're trying to do is. We're just trying to grow a brand. What uh, I mean, the, to put it in simple terms, I basically want to become the Woolworths of East Africa eventually, to have a homegrown retail brand. Yeah. Because as much as we love the products that are coming out of Woolworths, Foshini, Woolworths, yeah. they're not East African. No, they're not. They're not No, African. they're not. So you have people like you who are creating that for us. That's, that's what I would like. That's <laughs> yes. my, that's my long-term long goal. And it's not just that. You, have a, you, you give back to the community. You yes, have something happening. In, is it Zanzi or Dar es Salaam? Or is it local here where you give back to the community in terms of girls helping them with scholarship and a foundation? Yes, what we've started is we've started the Kokolili Scholarship Foundation mm -hmm. and 10% uh, of our net sales, annual sales, will go towards this um, scholarship fund. And it's really to be able to give um, these young girls a, a starting block. Yeah. I, I think I've been extremely blessed in my life. I've had a fantastic life. Um, I was very well educated. My parents made enormous sacrifices um, for me. And so I say, you know, if I could only do just a little bit so somebody else could have, even if it's a fraction of what it is, I was very privileged um, to be able to get. Because yeah. it's not a right, eh? It's, a, no. it's, it's, it's really, it's a privilege. Okay. Um, so how know. do people go about to, you know, getting or are benefiting from this uh, foundation? So I believe that in December is probably when the uh, end of year, year. results yes. come out, that will be our first uh, test. Wow. Um, you excited so about we're, that? We're, we're very excited about it. I mm -hmm. think we'll have to find um, partners who are already in a sector because I don't believe in recreating things. I think there is uh, this power in numbers and there's power in partnerships. Yeah. So there could be other organizations that are actually supporting the girl child and we would partner with them. I don't think I should just go there and start a fresh, a fresh when people have already laid um, a foundation. Yeah. Um, for, for that already. So we're still trying to do our research to be able to see who would be, uh, who we could best partner with. And my, what I'd really like for this scholarship uh, fund to do is to uh, focus on the STEM subjects, you know, science, technology, engineering. Um, because I think as girls, yeah. when we're coming up, we're almost taught to be scared of, of sciences yeah they're not considered very girly <laughs> and yet we have some very brilliant scientists that are women that's true and we need to be able to see more female engineers more female doctors more female neuroscientists and mechanics um, 
So we will be very specific in that sense that we want to be able to support girls that have already shown an interest in science and they want to be able to pursue this a little bit further. All the yeah. best to you. I know. already had um, a young girl that I started sponsoring okay. um, in Uganda and um, and just to see I think what that's has, the article I came across, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, just to see what she's, what has become of her and what she's doing. If I could do it for one person, I'm sure I could do it for, for other people for as other well. People, yeah. Beautiful. So I don't know where, it's, it's a beautiful journey where you're on and I like that you stuck by your dream. You know, you went to school and it's important to have a good education. Yes. But then again, you also got into what you love to do. Yeah. But what is that one thing that keeps you going, keeps you focused? Because it's not easy. It's not no, easy it to get your brand all. out, out no, there and no. risk it all. Yeah, it isn't at all. And I know for, I, sometimes my mom gets really worried and concerned. And some, yeah. even my friends, um, you know, they were worried. They're like, well, you know, uh, because as the ADB was a fantastic employer, yeah. uh, you know, you get an education benefit for your kids. So I forfeited um, all of that. Now I understand what you asked me earlier. <laughs> Isn't it a bit hard, Wikali, if you do all these drastic changes when you have a family and children? So is that yeah. what you were going through at that time? Yeah, but I think at the end of the day, you know, even what your children want to see you happy. It's true. The, the, and, and when you're happy, it's, you know, it vibrates. Everybody um, feels it. And it, somehow you will always find a way but what I'd advise people is you know make sure you get uh, your, your education fine it's good to pursue your dream but you see I, you can always have a backup plan yes worst case scenario if things don't go the way they can nobody can ever take away my certifications no from me I'm a certified public accountant I'm a certified internal auditor I'm a certified financial services auditor, certified government audit professional, so I can always go back and get a consultancy. Yeah. Um, did you, you shut know. it out, Kabisa? Completely, or do you have? You do that? No, have we? No, no it 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 depends. Some, as I said, for Kokulili, it's very capital intensive. Okay. Um, and I think, as you know, you mentioned, I've probably proven. But sometimes that is not enough for a financier. Uh, they want to be able to see more. Yeah. So if it gets to the point that I have to be able to back up what I have to yeah. expand the brand, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't mind going to get a consultancy. Uh, for me, it's um, a lot of times I say a lot of these things are about titles. Yeah. You know, this is good <laughs> to have a title, but it's not everything. I don't mind going back and and you doing know, something about it. Do, do so now we've, rub about we've it. rubbished the idea that you're going through a midlife crisis. Yeah, and like, and <laughs> do you think this is a midlife crisis? It's yeah. like, no, no I, I don't think so. I don't so. think so. I, don't think I think so it's important well. to live yeah. uh, your life to the fullest. Absolutely. But there's so many people out there, and we're coming to the end of this conversation. So this is where you get to talk to that person that whatever age they're in, that they're trying to, you know, pro protect themselves because of fear from what is lying on the other side of their dreams. They're not sure if they keep that bridge, if they go that way, that it's gonna be as stable as it is now. But you've done that, you've done that, and it's been successful for you. It's been exciting I for you. Know. You don't wanna call it successful. <laughs> I don't Just know if I want to call it. I amen. say amen. <laughs> but but what would you tell them? What would you say to them, those people? Like, if I have fear of doing this thing that is tugging at my brains all the time. You, you it, it, it has to set your belly on fire. fire. Mm. It's, it, you, you have to sit down and do a game of numbers, analysis, and say to yourself, what is the worst that could happen even if I took a day to live my dream? Wow. You see? Only you can decide it. Nobody else can, you know. And fine, it's not conventional wisdom will say maybe don't do this, whatever. Not everybody is, um, is a risk taker. But I firmly believe that God did not put us on this earth to be miserable. It, wow. it, it, can't, it, it can't be. That. You have to find it within yourself. And if every day you're coming and 
you hate going to work in the morning. Just the idea of working overtime is anathema to you. You just you can't you can't take it anymore. Getting out of bed, you only you can do something about it. Yeah. And you know, as I said, what's the worst could happen? At least I'll be able to say I started a brand, and then yes. if it didn't work out it didn't work out I go back and I get my job and life moves on Absolutely. but I don't think you should live half measures because you don't know how long you will be you, here for. you'll be here absolutely for. and we're really meant to live our lives to the fullest for how you've been amazing <laughs> <laughs> you have been amazing so Coco Lili is it do you have a shop is it an online shop and where can people get in touch with you social media yes so uh, we do have a shop we have our flagship store at Village Market mm -hmm. and the new wing of the, uh, of the mall oh, yeah. on the first floor. Um, and we also have an online shop. Uh, so we're able to deliver to you at home. Um, I know getting around in Nairobi for people who live in Karen, the whole idea of coming <laughs> to Village Market is like you're going to another yeah. country all together. But um, if people really like our products, we're able to bring them to, um, you. to the house and of course we have um, we're on Instagram and we're on Facebook as Coco Lily Africa um, yeah Coco Lily so. Africa everyone. <laughs> thank you so much for your time okay, thank it's you been thanks amazing. for having me no problem no. Okay. so what is the worst that could happen if you just took one day to leave your dream if you decided to look at the other side of fear and what lies there it could be exciting it could be fulfilling. So dare to dream, dare to cross that bridge that is called fear, and you might be shocked. This has been Motivate with me, Wikali, and Furaha of Coco Lili. I hope you had an amazing morning. We're taking a very short commercial break. When we come back, we've got Catherine Mwangi on Books and Blogs. I remember during an interview, I was, I was telling um, someone that if ever we are changed in this life, then we must be changed to become kinder. You know, we must be changed to become more appreciative, yes, more yes. loving.